Welcome to yet another episode of Legal Wrangle on Indirect Taxes. In this episode, we are presenting before you cases relating to inclusion of value of packing material in assessable value, method for computing assessable value in case of common input services and applicability of goods specific exemption notification. Regarding service tax, customs, we are focusing on the issue of service charges paid to financial intermediaries for providing RBI bond, attachment of another entity's bank accounts, revocation of CHA license. Today we start with a larger bent decision where the key issue is whether the value of gunny bags can be included in the assessable value for purpose of levy of excise when the assessee has failed in establishing that an arrangement for return of gunny bags with obligation on part of seller to refund value thereof existed between parties? The present assessee is Tata Chemicals Limited. Now let's go to Mona Lisa for details of the case. The assessee was engaged in manufacturing soda ash. According to SSC, they had entered into correspondence with their customers, wherein the customers were asked to return empty gunny bags for being reused for supply of bulk soda ash. Hence, the SSC claimed exclusion of value of gunny bags from AV. The SISTAT, however, denied the same on ground of failure of SSC to show such arrangement. The larger bench concluded the matter by observing that if an arrangement exists between the seller and the buyer of excisable goods for return of the packing materials by the buyer to the seller, its value cannot be included in the assessable value of finished product. The bench therefore held that since the assessee had failed in establishing such arrangement of return of the Gunnybergs with the obligation on the part of seller to refund the value thereof, it is not open to the assessee to claim its exclusion of the same from assessable value. In our second case, the key issue was whether the method for computing assessable value in case of common input services used for trading activities where there is no separate accounts is appropriate in cases before 1st April 2011 even though such method was introduced with effect 1st April 2011 only. The present assessee is TFL Quinn India Private Limited. Now let's go to Mona Lisa for details of the case. The SSA is engaged in manufacture of leather chemicals as well as its trading. It had availed Sinvac credit on input services which are common to both manufacturing and trading activity. The department was of the view that since trading activity falls under exempted service and the SSE had failed to maintain separate accounts for trading as well as manufacturing activity, they are liable for reversal of SINVAT credit availed on trading activity. The SISTAT observed that the SSE has availed input services for both manufacturing and trading activities. It is also undisputed that trading has become exempted service only with effect 1st April 2011. Hence, that portion of credit availed input services used for trading is not admissible. However, the formula given in Rule 63AB3, which was adopted by the department, cannot be used to arrive at the quantum used for trading when no separate accounts are maintained because the set provision nowhere mentions trading. The SISTAT further observed that the method of computation adopted by the SSE for reversing the credit is the method provided by the legislature for computing value in case of common input services used for trading with effect 1st April 2011. Therefore, the SISTAT directed to compute the value of credit for common input services attrib attributable to trading activity. In our third case, the key issue before the division bench of Apex Court was whether the notification issued by State of Haryana for providing exemption from tax to any dealer holding a valid exemption certificate under Haryana GST rules 1975 on the sale of goods manufactured by him can be treated as goods specific or the person selling it. The present assessee is Casio India Co. Private Limited. Now let's go to Mona Lisa for details of the case. The SSA was engaged in manufacture and sale of radio pagers. During the impugned period, the SSA after purchasing radio pagers from another entity 
carried on interstate sale of such pages and in course of the transaction, did not charge any sales tax from the purchaser on the basis of notification issued by Haryana government, which provides for exemption on the sale of goods manufactured by the dealer. The SEC filed its return and claimed exemption from the sales tax on those pages on basis of such notification. However, it was denied on the ground that the pages were not manufactured by the SSC. The Apex Court observed that the basic objective behind Rule 28A of Haryana GST rules is to exempt goods manufactured in the state when they are sold in the course of interstate or intrastate trade. The exemption notification therefore refers to the sale of goods manufactured by dealer holding a valid exemption certificate and the emphasis is on the goods manufactured. The Apex Court therefore granted exemption to SSE by concluding that the exemption is goods specific and not related to person selling it. In our fourth case, the issue is whether in case of applications filed on behalf of intending purchasers of RBI savings bond, fee paid to receiving offices and brokers for their role in the bond issue is brokerage or commission chargeable to service tax under banking and other financial services. The assessee involved here is J.M. Morgan Stanley Retail Services. Let's have the facts from Mona Lisa. Here the assessee, a registered broker, had filed applications on behalf of intending purchaser of RBI bonds in lieu of brokerage on the bonds that were issued against these applications. During assessment, it was held that these bonds are government securities within the meaning of Section 2H of the Securities Contract Regulation Act 1956 and that brought it within the meaning of expression securities as found in Section 6512 of the Finance Act 1994. Sistat observed that handling of application forms for an intending subscriber cannot constitute brokering in securities because securities do not exist at that stage. It was further held that taxing of transaction merely because the remuneration is designated as brokerage and because the recipient of that brokerage is a body corporate is not sustainable without a clear finding that the bond is tradable security. In our second last case, the issue is whether the tax dues of a private limited company can be recovered by attaching the bank accounts of partnership firm in which the director of such company is a partner. The assessee here is Achya Engineering Private Limited. Let's have some details of the case from Mona Lisa. In this case, the assessee was engaged in the business of providing erection, commission and installation services. In proceedings initiated against the partnership firm, department demanded service tax along with interest and penalty. Even after the assessee had filed an appeal before the first appellate authority against such demand, the revenue official issued a notice attaching SSC company bank account and which was attached on the ground that another entity has not paid the service tax as demanded. The High Court observed that in case the SSC company is a separate and independent entity, the bank account of the petitioner company cannot be attached for the dues of the proprietorship concern. It further observed that attachment and recovery of service tax demand from bank account of a company as against the dues recoverable from proprietorship concern is wholly illegal and impermissible. In our last case of today's episode, the issue is whether the appellate tribunal was right in sustaining the revocation of SSE's custom house agent license even if nothing has been proved by the revenue regarding the active involvement of SSE in smuggling of red sanders. The SSE involved in this case is Ajay Clearing Enterprise. Let's go to Mona Lisa for details of the case. The SSC was having a custom house agent license. It was engaged in an export transaction wherein the goods under export was declared as furniture wood. But on examination, it was found that the goods were in fact red sanders wood, an item banned for export. Further investigation revealed that the role of SSC is having not met the exporter and the export documents were received from a freight forwarder who had signed the documents on behalf of exporter. 
the export firm was found to be fictitious. The High Court observed that the customs house agent never met the exporter but was dealing with an intermediary. It is a lapse on his part of not being acquainted with the exporter but dealing with some fake identity. Thus not knowing the exporter but having signed and filed the shipping bill on the basis of documents received from the mediator was the real charge and held to be proved. The High Court remarked that tribunal should have noted that if the penalty is imposed on 28 March 2013 from 29th February 20, 2008 to 28 March 2013, the petitioner was merely carrying on the business as a customs house agent and was also obtaining renewal of the license. The court also observed that something more is required to establish and prove aiding, abetting and actively assisting in smuggling of red sanders. Once the assessee is found guilty of not contacting and obtaining authorizations from the exporter but relying upon some middlemen, in that case it was held that revocation of license was not a penalty which could have been imposed for this act. The High Court also added that the penalty that the appellant has suffered of loss of license as a customs house agent from 28 March 2013 till today should be sufficient. Well, this brings us to the end of this episode of Legal Wrangle on Indirect Taxation. You may write to us your comments, criticism and counsel at editor at tiltube.com. Please do subscribe to the TILTube channel on YouTube. It's free and will keep you updated on our new posts. Have a good day.